Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go! Hey everybody, what's up? How's it going? Hopefully, uh, hopefully you're you're crushing it, man. It's summertime, and uh, you know I'm sure you're super busy. Thanks for tuning in to this show. Before we get to today's episode, I want to I want to cover something. Uh, when we first started this show back in 2013, and by the way, man, I, I appreciate every single one of you guys. We since 20 since pretty much since our launch, we have maintained a top 100 show in the business category on iTunes, right? H- hundreds of thousands of other podcasts we're competing against, and we are consistently a top 100 show in the world. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Now, when we launched, people, I would get a bunch of emails from people, especially other business people, and they're like, Toby, why do you do it? How do you make this worth your time? Why did you set out, you know, what's in it for you? And I'll tell you something, it's, it's super fun to do the show. But what we set out to do is we wanted to bring you guys This audience, all the strategies that big brands are using to grow their business. So we wanted to take those strategies and apply them to small or small-ish businesses. We wanted to be the place where you go get advice, where you learn new strategies from people you trust, uh, and and as well as be the go-to company to grow your business. Now, we've said we slowly we've launched. I guess chunks of this stuff, right? So, you know, obviously, if you want to get on radio or TV, we do that. You know, if you want a a mobile strategy, Viralcast, we do that. Now, the last piece, the last piece that we are now rolling out is the digital piece, right? You need to grow your business. You need to be offline. You need to be online, right? there's so there's such a spectrum of things you can do, but what works? Where are you going to get a return on your investment? Where are you going to get a return on your time invested? So we are launching, and this is we, we we're right now building website Scout Media Group. Now Scout Media Group is going to be the online piece of what we do. Uh, we're primarily going to focus on buying Facebook ads because that's where that's the low cost right now. That's where the low hanging fruit is. Um, so, and I'll, let me t- I'll tell you a story of why we're launching. Normally, we launch one thing per year, right? Radio, then viral guys. Um, we're launching this a little bit early, and I'll briefly tell you why. We had we feature a company that does this on the show not 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 too long ago and uh we got him a ton of clients and and i i I, when i realized how many of you guys were using this company and i won't say who or what their names but they're good guys but they're just not cutting it um i went to those and i said hey look you got to launch a campaign for us i need to know that you guys know it inside and out i know that you guys are know the mechanics but there's all there's more than just the mechanics, right? There's nuance in terms of image use, copywriting, uh, you know, deployment times, deployment days. Uh, so they built me a campaign and uh, there was a lot to be desired, especially when it came to the creative side of it. Um, you know, they knew the mechanics, but the, the again, the other nuance, the, the 80-20, the 20% that really is the juice. I don't know. I don't know if they just didn't know it uh, or just didn't execute. Either way, um, we felt like it was time to launch. So if you guys are thinking, have been thinking about launching a digital component to your business, uh, send me an email and uh, we'll chat. We'll see if we're a good fit. All right. Hey, that's it. Let's get to the show. Um, you know, we recently had Melanie Pichet on, if you've been listening to the show, and Melanie out of Canada somewhere, huge content. She has built her business. She's doing three or 400 deals a year. By creating content, I got tons of feedback from that, and we wanted to bring on somebody else who is an expert at content creation, lead generation. He's an author who recently wrote The Foundation. The, his book focuses on personal branding, business branding, and web presence all around the real estate world. I'm thrilled to welcome Chris Kraft. Hey, Chris, thanks for taking hey. the time out. Hey, thank you so much, Toby, for having me. So listen, I want to talk about your ideas around, you know, content creation and distribution. But before we get there, I'm always curious about about the guy, man. So tell us a little bit about who Chris is. 
First and foremost, I'm a Christian. I, I love Jesus Christ, and he has my heart. I'm originally from Houston, Texas, born and raised, so I, I love Texas and, and barbecue, but fell in love with the Southeast when I moved to Atlanta for college in 1997. Uh, so I'm a proud Morehouse Tiger and Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket. And uh, I got my start, honestly, in the music industry. Uh, I'm sure you know uh, my, my friend Rivers Pierce over at Boomtown, um, but we talk a lot about about music. And my, my first venture out of college was an independent record label, and that's where I built up my marketing chops, eventually transitioned in 2010 to having my own agency where we did, uh, we did focus on content creation and content marketing for real estate professionals, uh, namely independent brokerages. And, uh, and, and like I told you a little bit earlier, I, I took all that experience over the last several years creating content for brokerage firms and I put it into this book. Okay. So, so, you know, you starting your independent label, um, I mean, you, know, you got to be scrappy, right? I mean, you don't, you don't have, you know, a big, uh, a big war chest to go out there. When you, how would you break down? I mean, I think when people, you know, when people think of content creation, for some reason, I think they default to blogging, right? But there's okay. tons of, you know, we're creating content right now. And right there's, now. so there's different, t- maybe break down, how you see content and then we can talk about creation and, and, and specifically, uh, you know, the different sort of platforms or, or visions that are out there. Sure. So let's start macro. So okay. content is anything that appeals to the experiencers senses, whether it's through audio or visual um, and that communicates a specific point, right? Uh, drilling in content is about voice as well. And this is where a lot of people get, get tripped up. Um, You have your unique voice. I have my unique voice. And the people who do content well, they just don't communicate information. Anyone can rattle off information, but it's how they communicate it and in what way and what specific, you know, flavor or seasoning they bring to it. So, yeah, content is anything that uh, appeals to the senses that communicates a specific message in a unique way. Right. And the, and, and the, the different forms of distribution, right, could be video, it could be Certainly. audio podcast, it could be blogging. Um, you know, I, I think that voice thing, you know, we have a we have a, a, a podcast production company called Viralcast. And one of the most difficult things I find when people are starting a new their own podcast is finding that own voice. Um, how how you know, you know I, I think when people think of content, Chris, they're hesitant to really jump all the way in for that one reason, like what do I say? How do I say it? But also, also they're concerned about the timeline for it to hit. Right? If I start blogging, geez, I'm not going to see any results for two years. You know, talk just about the different forms of of distribution, and then um, you know, how do you speed up that process of actually making an impact. So I'm very uh, transparent in uh, in the book about leveraging the people on your team. You know, so I work with agent teams as well, and there's bound to be one person there who's comfortable uh, writing in, in a tone that's not contrived, right? That's that's more open. That represents the the culture of the agent team. So don't put it all you know all on, on one person. So find that person that's in the team and make it a team effort. I'm also a big fan of of building up a stockpile of content before you start uh, distributing them out. I know people get really excited. You spend, you know, a couple hours knocking out 300 to 500 words and you're chomping at the bit to get that one piece of content out. You get it out. It doesn't perform like the way you want it to perform. And then you throw your hands up and you give up. Instead, I was, I would suggest you take two to three months Build up, you know, uh, do one piece a week, you know, so build up 12 to 16 pieces of content and drip them out over time. But with each piece of content, you utilize the, all the distribution distribution methods at your disposal to get them out there and repurpose the content. So you don't just throw that one blog post out there and like have it sit out there like a, a product on the shelf and expect people to come. No, you take the image from that that piece of content, the blog, you put it on Instagram. You take hmm. the image and put it on Pinterest. You take that same piece of content, you put it inside your email list, and you use it over and over again. You use Meet Edgar, 
a, a really cool platform uh, tool that I like to use and or IFTTT to drip that same piece of content out uh, through automated means. So it, it's it's really it takes strategy, and I think that's what a lot of people forget to do. They they go into it very tactically, get it out, and get frustrated when they don't see the results instantly. Yeah, for sure. Well, and look, and I, I don't want to lose anybody here, but but you know, I think you know when it comes to content creation, right? The, and I can talk specifically to a podcast, right? You can you can tell a story, right? You can, and I that's what I try to do. That I think that's one of the reasons why I ask my guests in the beginning, like, who are you, right? I kind of I want to dig into, I want to start you, you to tell your own story, so Sorry. you can you can be a storyteller or you can be a straight teacher, right? And I think you know. Lecturing, whether that's on a blog or a video or or audio, is is boring. Um, but I think you have to make that decision. And I think I think you know. And, and again, this is about you, Chris. But there's so much here that that you know I have to say. But you know, I think the one of the things you have to find, get alignment with, and I'd love for you to chat about this. Is number one, you have to know who you're speaking to, and then craft your message for that audience and and and, and as well right what well, you know who your audience your ideal client is you craft your message for that person and then find them meet them out in the world where they are and maybe pinterest is not where i mean you know where you know my certainly, clients are certainly and i totally agree so part of the book i talk about a personal brand and business brand standards right the things that you hold true to whenever you're creating content and you're creating any type of visual assets and part of that is who you serve right uh, who you serve talks a lot about who you are and yes who you serve also determines where you distribute your content to find said people uh, I give one good example I work with an agent in Columbus Georgia uh, named Kim Mixon and Kim is a former professional bodybuilder and she's an avid runner. And she serves, and it's not a coincidence, she serves the athletic community in her city, and in her town, and the, uh, the general region. And it speaks true to her brand because it's a natural connection. And I think if everyone would do that and just slow down and think about who you feel comfortable serving, then it will create those natural connections that differenti- differentiate you from the other people in your region. Well, and I think really what you're saying, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, but I think really what you're saying is, you know, this points back to authenticity, right? Yes. You need to be authentic, right? So if your authentic self is as of a bodybuilder, you know that world, you know how to speak to those people. And I think, you know, I think that's one of the m- most challenging things for people. Uh, I mean, look, I think if we look right now at the political climate, I and mean, we're recording this in June 2016, yep. um, you know, Hillary just got nominated, um, uh, you know, Trump is out there. P- I think people love Trump. Um, not necessarily for what he stands for, but because the guy is authentic. He is authentically him. Love him or hate him, right? You go, I kind of like what the guy stands for. Yeah, he, he lets it all hang out, and um, that's what helped him in his business career. It helped him in his transition into celebrity, and obviously is is ringing true in his political re- political career, too. You know, I'm not, I won't disclose who I'm voting for or not voting for, sure. but you're right. You, you are... Um, you are totally right about transparency and authenticity with him. It, but but again, do you think with all the people that you have worked with in the past, Chris? I mean, d- d- do you find that people are are hesitant to lift back the kimono and go, "Hey, this is who I am, right? This is what I stand for"? Because I think even though you're not going to disclose who you vote for, and I could care less, you know, I'm very right. much I'm very much a Trump guy. I mean, because that's just how I lean on. You know, that's the side I lean. Certainly, but but um, y- you know. I think some people are afraid of offending people. A guy like Trump's not, you know, and no. and I think when you get afraid of offending people, you're you're going to have a very difficult time connecting with your audience because you're not being authentic. You're not being you. Certainly, and and I'll start with myself before I talk about some of the people I work with. You know, as you can see, I led with my faith. And uh, a lot of people are really afraid to to lead with that, but uh, that's first and foremost, you know, followed by wife, kids, and and then you know, career, passion, calling, right? And uh, the people who I work with, who, where it never just worked out, were the people who just want to be so vanilla and right at the middle and be afraid to offend anyone and take a bold stance, and their content never stood out, yeah. and it never, you know, rang a chord with anyone because they tried to appeal to everyone. But the one guy that I work with, it, 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 my good friend uh, Reynolds Bickerstaff, 
this guy, big Auburn, you know, football fan, totally trashes at Alabama all the time. He's totally open about that. He do, he puts that in his videos. He does skits. He does impersonations, and he just lets his his whole personality just out there for everyone to see. And people really like that. You know, even people who are Alabama fans, you know, like, I got to respect this guy. Uh, and he's a broker, uh, by the way. And and people work with him and they love him for that. So I, I totally agree. You know, you can't be afraid of, of offending people because if you do that, you're, you're not going to connect with any you know, group of people at all. Right. No, I agree. So, but, but again, going back to the, my original question, Chris, you know, do you see that to be one of the challenges for people actually to find their voice is that, that, that fear of, of, of really being who they are and, and, and telling the world. Yes, yeah, certainly. But I have two words that help them. It, it, it is a big issue. It's a big stumbling block for them. Uh, but the two words are nature and nurture. So think <laughs> about like, you know, where you're born, who your parents are, and all those experiences between, honestly, you don't start remembering things permanently until you're around, you know, getting close to three years old. But think about all those experiences from three years old, you know, all the way through high school, if you're, you know, privileged enough to go to college or whatever, all those things help shape you, right? And and those are the things that you need to lean on and, and make note of as far as who you are authentically as a person and who makes you you. And those are the things that need to go beyond your bio. You need to take those with you when you're networking in person, when you're meeting with a potential uh, client, you know, when you're going out there and engaging at a, at a conference. Have your story right there in hand in your holster so that you can move around with that. And that could be just as much as, just as, much as part of your elevator statement, uh, elevator pitch as far as who you are, than who your broker is or how long you've been working in the industry. Because everyone has that story, but no one has your story. Yeah. No, I agree. So, so okay. So, be authentic. Um, you, you know, that's that's a good tip to for people to you know again have in your holster your your story. Um, um, what? So again, okay. So I know my ideal client, and I and and I'm saying that. Do you also say that's the, one of the first places to start when you think about content creation is n- determine the audience that you want to connect with. Certainly. I I will say 1A and 1B. You know, 1A is uh, honing in on on your voice. And you honestly don't – I wouldn't allow not being comfortable with your voice to stop you from creating content, whether that's a blog or a podcast. Because honestly, it might take you several months to a couple years to to hone in on your voice. Um, I could throw that question back to you. You know, when you first started Super Agents Live, you know, is it the same show that it is today? You know, I I don't know. Uh, But – uh, I will say yes. One B is uh, your your target clientele and and who you serve, um, because when it comes down to it, when you when you're when you're helpful and when you're in the process of helping people and you see the satisfaction on people's faces after they they are helped by you, you know that's what really what you work for, right? You know, some people might be motivated by money, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you have to serve people in a great way in order for you to be successful in the long term. Yeah. And I'll answer that question. I'll tell you what. So, so I very quickly, this is the same show. Um, you know, we're at 200 and something episodes that we've released. I I probably have done 400 plus interviews, but probably at episode 20 something is when it broke loose. And, And I'll tell you how it broke loose. It broke loose. I had Mike Ferry on the show. And I, I, at the time, I had a list of questions. It was very kind of scripted. I sent him the list of questions, and as I don't know, some, one, somebody on his staff saw it, and and he got me on the phone. He said, "Hey, Toby, look, um, these questions are more designed for a real estate agent. Would you agree?" And like typical Mike Ferry, "Would you agree?" And I said, <laughs> "Yeah." And so, so uh, that that was the first show that it was completely unscripted. And from yeah. that episode on, like th- this whole th- like everything I do is. Totally unscripted. I never know where it's going to go. So, so that was that was the, where I stumbled upon my voice. But it took it took somebody to tell me, "Hey, look, we're not going to do it your way," which was interesting. And, and I think I think the second thing, you know, where I kind of whitewash my 
the way I do things is, is, you know, I try to, when you do a podcast, I'm sure, you know, it, it's either you have to market, uh, uh, iTunes makes you market as clean or explicit. And I think for me, I think the only difference between my real personality and what you see on this is that, you know, if you get me offline, I'll throw some F bombs around and I won't do that on the show just because I know that people listen in their cars and they have kids. And I try to, you know, I try to be respectful of that. Right, right, right. And I mean, I, I will say you're getting me. You're getting me. Um, right now, you're getting the tr- the true me. Now, if my, my eight-year-old, my three-year-old uh, were at home now, thankfully, you know, they're at camp, and they were to run into the uh, the room, you know, you would hear their parent me, hey, you know, get out of here, kids, you know. Uh, but uh, this, honestly, the, the people who um, are as close to who they are at home, in the dark, in private, out in the in the public as well. Sure, you're going to have to clean things up a little bit. That's understandable. But I, I think the people who kind of blur the lines between life and work are the ones who are more comfortable in work and who you know do well at the same okay. time. <clears throat> All right. Well, so let's talk about platforms, right? So, right. so you know, or, or as you call it, the foundation. So, and and I do think I do I do think that everybody should have a platform or foundation that they own, right? It's I think it's critical to do that because if you build your if you start to disseminate your messaging on other people's platforms, meaning Facebook or Twitter or or LinkedIn or whatever, you know, things change, right? Things they go do. away. And if you they build do. your platform or foundation on on somebody else's platform, um you are at risk of losing Everything you built. So I, 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 we are 100% alignment in that. So let's talk about now you said create a piece of content and then disseminate it, distribute it in every way possible, right? So the written form blog, you know, maybe an audio form of podcast, video on YouTube. Is there, in terms of getting traction, which one do you think it's easiest to get, assuming we're good at it? You know, which one is the easiest to get traction on, do you think? So certainly, uh, to answer it directly, I, I really believe is uh, the blogging, the content distributed directly to Facebook, boosting the junk out of it, and then also sharing that content with. If you've had, uh, if you've been blessed enough to be able to build up an email list, because email is still the most direct and consistent way to engage people. Yep. Um, and get them to to open if you're savvy enough with headlines. That's a whole nother topic. Yep. Um, so I, I think those two tactics are are the top two. Um, but I'm a big believer overall, just kind of zooming out a little bit in the hub and spoke model of uh, digital marketing, which is where you own the center of it, the the hub, which is your website, uh, your where your authentic content is, your original content rests, and then you use the marketing channels. Uh, at your disposal to send content through those channels. And that could be anything from Facebook. It could be your email channel. It could be your podcast. It could be your YouTube channel. For the express purpose of getting the people that are out there at the end of those spokes to come back to your site, to your hub, right, where you own and where you can further engage them and nurture them in the future. And I talk heavily about that in the book. Okay, so so I'll just let me ask you a question. So for me, we've played with we've played with long form. The, the, I, I love doing what we're doing right now. What I don't like doing is sitting down and writing a blog. I just don't have time to do it. Right. And and I've played with that because uh, you know there are show notes, which is basically a blog post that will accompany it this. Is. Right. Um, but yeah, but you know what? For me, long form or super short form, like. It, it doesn't change our downloads. It doesn't change our, our visits. And maybe, I, maybe, I don't know. What, I mean, what's your take on that? So my take is, you know, so thinking that I'm talking to an agent, right, or mm-hmm. someone with, with some listings, I don't think there's anything better than very descriptive, hyper-local, uh, keyword-rich content that tells people the, the do's and don'ts, what's hot, what's not, about a specific part of town, uh, and like my friends at AdWorks say, you know, we're going to be stop. We're going to stop talking about a zip code, and we're going to start honing in on neighborhoods, right? Yeah. So as hyper local as you can get, you know, putting that type of content out there beyond just the spacious four bedrooms, two baths, right. you know, getting getting beyond the, the vanilla stuff that everyone does, 
I think that just reigns true. And that's why I was very transparent about it might not be the agent that's creating that content. But you better find someone to do it for you who you help rein, uh, uh, hone in on your voice for you and basically become, in so many words, whether you have them as a ghostwriter or they get the byline, as long as the people who are searching for that specific keyword <clears throat> Are, they're reading it and they're associating it with your personal or business brand. That's where you win. That's where you win. Right. Well, I mean, because I mean, basically, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. And and that's that 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 kind of content's different kind of content than than what I'm putting out. But oh, it is. Yes. And I think is. I think what this ties into, you know, this is this is uh, you know long tail keywords. So if I'm writing a blog post about you know Stone Ridge Estates, which is you know a, a, a development, um, sure. and you know that's that's super valuable. And you know, I guess this speaks back to you know SEO copywriting. Um, it is. And yeah. So I mean. Maybe just take a minute and talk a little bit about that. If if somebody doesn't quite understand, they've heard the term long tail keywords, and maybe just unpack it a bit. Certainly. So uh, when when people first you know get into creating content, uh, they want to be superheroes, right? Uh, they want to they want to be the uh, the top of page one for homes in Los Angeles, and that's not realistic. But if you start to zoom in and get a little bit more granular. Even without using the keyword planner tool, if you just go and do Google searches for, um, say, uh, homes or apartments or condos in Huntington Beach um, for sale, you know, going from beyond two to three words in your keyword to, to stretching it out to five to six, you can find specific specific people who are looking for those type of listings that you have or those type of uh, properties that you're marketing, right? And this is all organic. This is all free. The only thing that you invest is in time. So you go from trying to create content for a very competitive keyword like Los Angeles or Atlanta Homes to something that's a little bit more specific. One, you find a better chance of uh, reaching the first page of Google. And two, you have a better chance of generating that lead uh, uh Thinking that you have, you know, someone who's going to find you because you start to target a, a little bit more of a specific niche in terms of search traffic. Okay. Do you, do, you know, in terms of, it's, it, you know, we also have, I don't know how much you know about what we do. We, we have a radio arm. We, you know, we put agents on radio. And one of the things I always tell people uh, that do radio with us is, you know, we're, we're Chris Craft, right? We're going to, you know, we do uh, um, a commercial on your news talk radio station um people may remember chris craft but not your phone number i always encourage people to buy a an, an ad right a google ad so if they remember nothing else they go chris craft realtor and all of a sudden your ad comes up Bingo. what what could you or do you you know if i farm stone ridge estates you know should i should i you know can i I guess. Look, I'm not. This is. I'm not doing this elegant at all. How <laughs> do we? To be. How how can we marry our content with with ad deployment? Certainly. So uh, the thing with content and ad deployment, your ad is always going to do what? It's going to send someone to a, a landing page that's built around conversion, right? So. Yep. Your, your content does the same thing. So your content brings the person to the table, but this is where calls to action come into play. And we've all seen them. You know, a call to action could be uh, a window takeover to where you, we've all been on like entrepreneur.com or uh, a, a big site and there's a, a pop up, albeit, you know, annoying or not, it gets someone to make a decision. And that takeover will take someone. Uh, either it'll get their, their information or it could take someone uh, direct them toward a landing page. Now, not being elegant, you could do a text call to action, right? So basically, any person who's savvy in creating content, especially long form, you're not going to just have 500 words, no break in the flow, just boom, here, take it and consume it. That person is going to bounce off the page in a second. But if you're savvy enough to break up the text, Use some some headlines, some subheads 
some of your sub hits could be a call to action or a link to send someone to that landing page that's also the end destination for your your radio ad or the end destination for your paid social ad, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so you're using the, you're using your content in the same way as you use your your radio ad. It's a way to catch people, but then direct them uh, to the landing page where you want to send them through a CTA. Got it. Okay, good. That's good. Um, and by the way, you know, the, the, those pop-ups, right, or, or light boxes, as they're called, uh, right. they work, man. They work. They sure do. <laughs> yeah, I know everybody hates them, but I mean, even if you go, we used to we used to not have a light box at all. Then I realized that they, how, how well they, they, uh, they were effective. Uh, then I used a small one. And now, if you are a new person and you go to our site, superagentslive.com, um, the first thing you'll see is, like, the whole page. You know, the whole, and you can close it out at the top. Sure. Uh, but most people don't. Most people just give me their email address. And I mean, I, I you know, in tr- I want to talk about list building with you uh, in a second. But right. for me, like, you know, I will get commonly between every day 30 to 100 new people on my list every single day because That's of that light box. Awesome. <clears throat> that is awesome. And, you know, I don't know your specific uh, conversion rate, but your standard vanilla conversion rate is somewhere between one and a half to two percent. You know, so that means every. You know, 100 people that come to your site, uh, 2% are going to convert. You know, so if you can do, do anything to, to gain the system to where you can have the, a page takeover or, or, or the, the like page, like box rather, you know, if you could turn that 2% into 5 yeah, you know, that's over a 100% difference. So anything you could do to increase uh, the, the amount of leads you could do. I say do it. Absolutely. And for everybody out there, if you don't, if you are kind of want to delve into this or look at this, there's, there's a great site called sumo me, uh, com, And that's all they do. I and mean, this is their, their experts at this one light box thing. Um, and so, so, um, do you think so? It's one thing for me to have a light box. It's one another thing for you because we are both media companies. Certainly. Do you think for that that realtor that broker out there um, is that is he gonna get like a crazy amount of bounce? I mean, would you suggest that realtors use light boxes on their content? Yes. Okay, on their um, content, not their on, site. On, not their site. Okay. No, no, negative on the site. You know, because when people come to the site, what they want, they want to make sure they can search, right? So don't get in the way of people searching uh, for for properties. Now, it's debatable, and I would love to hear your feedback on this, uh, whether you do just open search where people can search for as much as they want or you do limited search. I've seen limited search to where it kind of caps the amount of uh, queries people enter uh, and then it makes them make a decision on giving them the, the email address to in order to, to search more. Right. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, strictly talking about the like boxes, you know, stick to your, your blog content. OK, that. no, that makes sense. And I'll, I'll, t- I'll give you my my take on that. I think that I think that, number one, this comes down to what kind of mindset do you have? Right. right. Scarcity or abundance. Right. So if you live in scarcity, you're going to go, whoa, I, I don't want to give put up any friction for these people to, to potentially bounce from my site. If you have an abundance mindset, yeah, throw up, you know, limit their search. And I think that I think that it comes down to that question of friction. So I'm I, a consumer. Consumer, I'm on Chris Craft's site. I search a couple times, <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, I'm forced to to if I want to continue searching, right, or go a, or drive a little bit deeper on that property that I'm looking at to right. to provide my name and email address. And I think I think it comes down to really asking that question for that consumer: what it causes them more friction, right? One to just simply give my name and email address or say, screw it, I'm not going to look at Chris anymore because of this, and, and close it out, and then search for a whole other realtor and start the process all over again. So I think that there's, even though you're providing a, a, a hurdle, I think there's less friction for that consumer to comply with a name and email address rather than close out and start the whole, you know, start to search for a whole new realtor all over again. I, I totally agree, and I think it's totally worth uh, the gamble, and I think that's why... We're starting to see, you know, the, the people who are really killing it um, in real estate, like they have a marketing abundance mindset, right? Um, Chris Spiker, a really awesome uh, agent, and and, um, and his see, wife yep. up there in, in Maryland, Chris. yeah, they they have an abundance digital marketer mindset, right? And I believe that's the mindset that I'm trying to get more agents and agent teams to embrace, right? in order to take their, their lead gen to the next level. Well, I think, I think, man, this is, this is a topic that, look, most realtors are not good marketers. That's it. Right. 
Right. Right. Um, and then, but and I think I think really where there's opportunity for these people is for these realtors to start thinking like internet marketers. You know, and yes. and, and almost nobody's doing that. You know, it, the simple fact, the simple th- like simple easy thing of number one focusing on building your list and doing it by providing a free you know digital asset, right? A free right. ebook. Well, how many realtors are doing that? Literally, I, I like. <laughs> Like point zero zero five, right? Like almost nobody. Even though I tell people on this show all the time, go write a book. You know, seven tips to get top dollar, right? Seven easy ways to increase curb appeal. Just go. It's crazy. It's crazy, right? It's, yeah, and, and uh, sorry to interrupt. No, but even your blog content that you've already put out there, you could turn that into a PDF and turn it into a, a gated download. Right, right. It's all. It's I've done it. It, it works. It's ethical. It's your content. You could do whatever you want with it. Absolutely. 100%, man. Um, so listen, if you guys are listening to this, go write a book and put it yes. out there. Because listen, you know, you know, all this is another thing I say all the time, Chris. And you got me riled up now. But, you know, <laughs> uh, all traffic is either earned or paid, right? You either earn that traffic or you just paid for that traffic. And I think it's I think it's. Um, uh, wasteful or or God, there's so many words right. In order you paid or earned that traffic for you not to try to move it along, the, uh, you know, and create a connection uh, by getting their email address. I think it's just irresponsible. I, I totally agree, and I, I, you know, I have to give my homegirl a shout out. I really believe Katie Lance, though she's not an agent, um, she's re- she's totally mastered repurposing her content. It's all fair game and. If we could get more agents thinking with that mindset, and uh, I, I believe there are some people out there who are giving some good press to agents who are starting to think this way, hopefully it'll catch fire and it'll, it'll create a marketplace that's a lot more savvy. Yeah, yep, and a lot more dynamic. You know, I'll tell you, you know, the the Katie Lance, I met her once uh, not too long ago, and oddly enough, she didn't know who I was, which which was I thought was a little bit strange, uh, but <laughs> but. Um, I just got to say, you know, again, I don't know. I, I know I know of her, you know, and I know what she's doing, but I, I bristle, man. And, 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 you know, I don't know what you think about this. I bristle when people brand themselves as a social media expert. Like, oh, I, sure. that bothers me. Sure, sure. Yeah, you know, because huh, I, I'll, I'll put it to you this way. Social is just an extension of who you are anyway. And I really, I know we're talking tools and tricks and, and, and that could, you know, somewhat set you apart. Just like with music, it's what comes from the inside. It's not really the instrument you use, right? Or, or the, the technology, the auto-tune. Um, I, I think social is really not that hard. And I'm not trying to diss anyone. I think social is one of those things where if you're authentically you, and if you know how to blend, the, the reach the perfect balance of um, uh, timely, like uh, live engagement and automation to leverage your time, you could do it. You could totally do it, right? Um, and, and that's one thing I realized with my agency when I first launched in 2010. We were doing social media marketing. Um, when I started to see that, you know, if you teach someone how to fish, you know, sure, get paid for your time and then let them go and they have it, that, you know, that's a win, you know. So I kind of don't do the social stuff anymore, but I know that that content is such a big barrier and it's a stumbling block for people. You know, so that's where, you know, I do my work and, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm paid well to do it. And um, but yeah, social, that's a yeah, that's a whole nother thing. Yeah. Me. Yeah. yeah. OK. Yeah. So. So look, in terms of tools, um, I want to ask you this is what I want to ask. you. Know, I want to try to get this out because I, I don't know that I'd be surprised if what I'm going to ask you, you've ever been asked before. But when it comes to content creation, is there a formula or structure that people should follow. And let me, let me tell you, let me give you kind of a, a nudge in the right direction. So for us, when we sit down to write radio ad copy, we, there's a very, there's a very strict formula we follow and it's a four part structure and it's one offer, right? What are we going to offer? Right. Guaranteed sale in 30 days or, you know, Chris will sell your home for free. Um, so offer how, we tell them how we can do it, right? Chris has developed an exclusive marketing system, blah, blah, blah. Social proof. Just last week, using Chris's system, he sold the house for $20,000 more than the cops said it was worth, and then call to action. So offer, how, social proof, call to action. When it comes to content, is there any kind of formula or structure that you follow or, or, or encourage people to follow? Yes, um, and 
I don't know if you uh, if you had a chance to to see it, but I have an uh, electrical engineering degree, mm. so I kind of approach writing copy as a problem solver, kind of like an engineer, um, and it's it's very deliberate. So it's focus keyword. So think about your keyword first. Secondary keyword, the keyword that you might not want to uh, you know rank for, but you want to have it enough density in uh, the copy so that people might be able to uh, find it. Um, the big why of the, the piece of content that you're creating, and then the offer, the CTA, uh, that you're trying to drive someone to. Um, because Chris Smith you know, told me this from Curator the other day, that if your, your content or your website as a whole is not trying to sell someone or push someone toward a decision, what are you doing it for? You know, so those are the four things that I keep in mind. Focus keyword, secondary keyword, big why, and the offer. And if you tackle those four things in your content, uh, whether you do short form or long form, short form, long form, it works, you, you'll win. You'll do well. But you can't just do it once. You have to do it consistently over time. Um, so that's why, you know, even before that, I like to plan out 90 days of content, you know, just in a simple Excel document. Uh, have an editorial calendar that has those four things in it uh, with uh, turn-in date and publishing date, and then you're off and rolling. Okay. Yeah, and, and Chris's stuff, I mean, he's he's always selling, man. I, and for me, I, Chris is a nice guy. You, you know, he's been on the show, and we've traded emails and all that stuff. So I'm not saying anything bad about Chris at all, but but – it, 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 when I'm on somebody's email list and they're selling me all the time, like it gets tiresome. So, you, but but I just want to confirm. So, you do believe that you know that all your content should have the purpose of 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 making an offer rather well, than educating. Well, we'll see. Th- that's the thing. The offer is it could be education as well. So, if you read a lot of my content, the offer is to send someone to a content piece. That further educates them, that further nurtures them. Okay, and it's you know because I, I'm very much in the same belief as uh, Gary V. You know, you jab a couple times before you come out with you know with the knockout punch. Yeah, yeah. And and, and the jabbing is is natural. You know, you you put time investing into the edification of the people who you want to be on your list, right? So so no, the 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 offer that's contained inside the blog post. I would say 80 to 90 percent of the time is not the offer where you ask someone to come out of their wallet. OK. OK. <clears throat> All right. Um, OK. Perfect. Now, you mentioned you said a word. You said balance. Right. Um, and, right. you know, with I mean, again, I don't want to talk about social, but to illustrate or ask this, you know, I'll bring it up, you know, for for we've all seen those agents when it comes to Facebook. They're all about hey, new listing. And again, right. boring. Right. right so, right. you know, when it comes to creating content, like how do you how do you balance that that storytelling with business or, or, or educating with? I, I don't know if that's even a good question, but I know you know where I'm getting at. Yeah, so I, I will say in every industry, you know, outside of real estate, I'm an eighty twenty guy. Um, eighty eighty percent personal, you know, in terms of your social, uh, unless you have like a, a branded account. And honestly, a lot of the branded accounts are are getting really, you know, personal and funny too. Uh, just building, you know, uh, engagement just on you know non business topics. Um, but typically, I, I'm eighty twenty. But for real estate, I'm ninety ten. Because uh, because real estate is all re- already has that stigma of, oh goodness, here we go, you know, Jane Doe, uh, real estate agent, or Jane Smith rather, real estate agent is, uh, you know, whenever she sends a tweet, you know, it's going to be about a listing, right? You know, so which get to me gives an agent, you know, more uh, incentive in being more personal, right? You know, so you know when people talk about balance, they they think fifty fifty, but in the industry where it, you know people usually run rampant in trying to push people toward a listing, I think you need to do ninety percent personal and ten percent salesy. Yep, I agree. I I absolutely agree with that. Okay, um, we got to start wrapping up here now. Cool. Throughout this book, <clears throat> throughout this book, you know, throughout this interview, you, you've mentioned Gary V, Chris Smith. Um, you know, you, you've 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 said some names. Uh, I always ask for a book recommendation. So, so, what does a guy like you read, man? And here's the setup: I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy today? 
Can I go non agent real quick? Sure. Get mad at me. Yeah, sure. I, I read the Bible every day, so that that's my that's my devotional. So, but when it when it comes to, I, I want to get agents out of the the agent books. You know, just for my interview, and I thought about this, a classic book about building relationships through digital means is Trust Agents uh, by Chris Brogan and Julian Smith. Get that. Get that. You know, and then to take it to the next level about igniting your content, you know, going beyond publishing your blog posts or, or your podcast, but actually getting out there through your channels and get people to engage with it. I will go with Content Code by Mark Schaefer. So th- those are the three. Got it. All right. Well, everybody, look, if you want to get Trust Agents by Chris Brogan, uh, using the web to build influence, improve reputation, and earn trust, uh, or the other code, what was the other one? Yeah, Content Code by Mark Schaefer. Content Code. You can get a free copy on us. Just go to audibletrial.com slash Live. Sweet. Yeah, man. Um, well, look, Chris, uh, I appreciate the time for sure. Um, if people want to learn more about what you're doing, um, where can people find you? People can find me at craftrights.com, and that's where you can really learn about me as a person. That's C-R-A-F-T-W-R-I-T-E-S.com. And uh, you can find out more about the book at thefoundationbook.com. Um, and I love people engaging me on Twitter. And I'm on Twitter at Craft Rights as well. Perfect, man. And if you go to craftrights.com, um, sign up and receive a copy of my branding book for free. <clears throat> so go get Chris's book. Hey, bud. Uh, I appreciate uh, you taking the time out of your busy day and sharing with my audience. Thank you, Toby. I really appreciate it as well. You got it, buddy. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. This show is produced by me, Toby Salgado, with help from our research team and production done by ViralCast. If you're building a team and want to make sure you're doing it the most efficient way, reach out to Corker and Coaching. They coach 83 of the nation's top producing teams, and for our listeners, they'll give you a free business evaluation. Send an email to Bubba at CorkerandCoaching.com and let them know I told them told you guys to call.